the hold frame or the freeze frame. Today, I'm gonna to show you the differences between both and show you why one is better than the other. So in Final Cut Pro, the hold frame can be accessed with Shift H, whereas the freeze frame can be accessed with Option F. The major difference here is the hold frame is going to throw you into the retime editor, whereas the freeze frame is actually going to almost take a screenshot of that exact moment, extend it out, and then continue the clip on. Now there's a huge benefit with the freeze frame here. I really like having the ability to edit by clicking and dragging on either side of the clip to shorten or lengthen. You can also make edits with stuff like option, left bracket, right bracket to trim it down. But that is about the only feature that I really like about the freeze frame over the hold frame. So let me explain why I think that you should actually always use the hold frame instead. So if we want the hold frame, all we need to do is push shift H and that will of course make the hold frame. If you want to extend out the length of the hold frame, you can drag it here with this handle. I'm not a big fan of how this is designed, but there are so many benefits to the hold frame over the freeze frame. The first of which being that if I were to apply effects to this so I'll push command 6 to get my color correction and I'll just go crazy here so we can really see it you will have full control over these effects so I can enable them disable them it does not matter however if I were to do the freeze frame here you'll see these effects are actually completely baked into the clip so I don't have the ability to change those around so if you're doing a color grade or something you'd be really really stuck especially if you needed to change the grade down the road another reason that I really love the hold frame is if we double click click on these handles, we have some hidden features here. We have the source frame, which we can edit. So if you happen to freeze at the wrong moment, you can easily click and drag your source frame using that source frame editor to change it to a different frame. So maybe I want it over here. If you did the freeze frame, you would have to just undo it and redo your freeze frame. And if you're further down the road and you didn't realize until it was too late, then you're going to have to do a whole bunch of re-editing and it just takes a lot of time. Another advantage, which is hidden in that menu, is is if you double click, you can go up to the speed transition and you can enable that. So it's actually going to somewhat give you a speed ramp. Now it's far from perfect, especially on this particular clip, which is only 24 frames per second. If you had something that was like 60 or 120 would be even better, you would really see how this works well. It's going to speed ramp from full speed down to zero. So that's a really nice feature to have. You could also do it on the end there and you can actually enable that speed transition by clicking on this down arrow and going and checking this smooth end transition, but that only works on the end segment. So if you want it at the beginning, you have to do it by double clicking on this handle here. The last reason I really prefer the hold frame over the freeze frame is the ability to end your music very easily. So let's say I wanted to make an edit here. I want maybe the song to end right at that moment. I'll just push shift H, create a hold frame, and I'm actually gonna extend this hold frame out considerably just so we've got some room to work with. And I actually messed up my edit so we can edit the source frame, drag it over here just a clip or two. There we go. Double click that again. Now we can jump into the effects panel, go down to cathedral and add that effect to our clip. Now we can go down to zero, click add a keyframe there, and then we'll drag it up considerably so that we've got a nice smooth reverb transition at the end of our clip. So if I play it through, Just like that, we have ended our song right in the middle without having to do any crazy fancy editing. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn way more about the Retime Editor in Final Cut Pro, I super recommend that you check out this video. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next one.